Britain stands today on the brink of a major revolution of the way we teach our children about computing. Not all revolutions are good, but this one is. And it's been watched with intense interest from other countries around the world and some envy. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what's been happening, why it's important, and how you can help to make it a success. So here, let's start with um, something that uh, Richard Riley, who was a Secretary for Education in the United States a little while ago, said. Education should prepare young people for jobs that don't exist, using technologies that have not been invented, to solve problems we're not yet aware of. That's a big challenge, right? <laughs> How do we do that? So here's what we do at school. So we teach children about skills, uh, immediately applicable knowledge, typically involving artifacts, you know, so you can, might think sewing machines or bandsaws, or yes, computer programs like Microsoft Office, right? So we might uh, um, teach them how to use these, this stuff purposefully. And that's immediately applicable and useful, but it dates fairly quickly. So to address Richard Riley's point, we also teach them about foundational disciplines. So you might think of this as long-term knowledge. So stuff like physics um, or history um, or mathematics, this lasts you a whole lifetime. It doesn't take quickly, and we would use words like principles, ideas, techniques, methods, body of knowledge to describe that kind of stuff. Now, in my field of computing, what has happened is that the subject Information and communication technology, which, praise be, is part of our national curriculum up to now, but has become focused on technology. Right? So it's even in the very title. So it's in the left-hand part of this slide, all focused around using things purposefully and thoughtfully. And that is important. But we've lost sight, or perhaps never gained sight, of an underlying subject discipline, which is the discipline of computer science. And perhaps that's not surprising, but even at a university level, that's a fairly young discipline, certainly compared to physics, say. Um, so it's atrophied away. And what, so um, I think... What we've ended up doing is, in, in what we tell our children about computing, we've ended up focusing too much on technology, on things, on devices, on those seductive boxes, and not enough on ideas. So I want our children not only to uh, consume technology, but to be imaginative creators of technological artifacts. I want them to be uh, creative writers as well as appreciative readers. Um, I want them to understand what they're doing, as well, or how the stuff that they're using works, as well as using it. Arthur C. Clarke once famously remarked that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think it's very damaging if our children come to believe that the computer system that use are essentially magic, that is, not under their control, made by somebody else, not something that they can interact with or indeed take participate in creating with. I think that's bad. So, if you walk up to a person on the street today and ask them, what does a computer scientist look like? They would probably say, probably male, socially challenged, geek, spotty, probably a bit, little bit like Simon, actually. Well paid, maybe, <laughs> but living in a basement writing code. I want to encourage you instead to think of computer science in the way that you might think of science. That is, as a foundational subject that every child should have the opportunity to learn from primary school onwards. That's a big shift in perception, isn't it? And so to help you make that shift, I want to just give you some idea of what computer science is, particularly in the context of a school. So here are some words. So computer science is to do with the study of information and computation, not primarily about machines at all. It should be called computing science, really. It's about algorithms and data structures and the way that computational processes communicate and coordinate. It involves reusable skills, so programming and coding certainly, and you will have seen a lot in the press about why we must teach our kids to code. But computer science is about much more than that. It's not just about coding to get, to get the job done. It's also about broader thinking skills like computational thinking and abstraction and modeling and design. So these are all abstract words. I want to show you, give you a visceral sense of what computation information might look like for, to computer science. So here is a, a video made by my, um, the amazing Tim Bell from New Zealand, um, showing how of kids learning to sort. So here they are, standing on a, on a, a network drawn on the floor. And uh, when two children walk along those lines and meet at one of the round circles, they're each holding a number. And if the kid on the left is on the left, they, they swap over if one number is bigger than the other. If they're not bigger, they don't swap. Um, and then when they all start at the beginning, and they do this together, so this is a parallel algorithm happening, and they walk along the lines, and they meet, and they swap over, and if everything goes right, will it go right? Actually, I think that's going to go right. Um, they end up sorted at the end. Um, 
And that's, there's something rather wonderful about that. And you can do it as a competition. It's kind of quite fun. You can see who can do it fastest. And you can even do it on a larger scale in a playground. Tim tells me <laughs> this five seconds of video took him all morning to uh, record. <laughs> Why did I show you this? So I showed you this because it's fun because it involves primary school children, because it's, um, it's intriguing, like there's something clever happening. And it's because there's no computers involved anywhere. This clearly is about computation and not about technology. It encourages you to ask questions like, could we do this with more numbers? Did the teacher put us in the right order at the beginning to end up sorted at the end? Shall we try it with a different way around? To get the idea, and some of those questions have quite deep answers, but I love the way that a child could ask them. So that's about um, uh, computation. Uh, let's do one about information. So my friend Jared over here, supposing I want to exchange a message with Jared. So you probably have the idea that I could encrypt it some way if Jared and I shared a secret key, right? So like marmalade, then we could somehow encrypt our message, send it to each other, provided none of you knew our key, you couldn't decrypt it. But what if we didn't have a secret key between us? Could we have a public conversation in front of you all at the end of which Jared and I shared a secret key that we could use to encrypt our subsequent conversation, but which none of you knew. That doesn't sound very plausible, does it? Because if you heard everything we said, you'd know everything we knew. But it's possible. It's not only possible, it's quite easy. Uh, a 12-year-old can understand how it's done. It's called Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange. And like many of these lovely ideas of computer science, it's immediately applicable. When you go on to uh, Amazon or eBay or something and uh, send your credit card details, a little padlock appears on your browser, and Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange is going on with Amazon or eBay to secure your credentials because you don't want to take a seat. You don't, want, don't share a secret key yet with your um, supplier. So it's a rather clever idea. It looks superficially implausible. That's what I mean about ideas, not technology. So you might say, all right, so you convinced me reasonably that computer science is kind of interesting, and maybe some kids should do it. But should every child do it from primary school? So let me ask you this. Why do we ask every child to learn science from primary school? Not because they're all going to become physicists. So why? It's because we, science teaches us something about the world around us, and that if we know nothing about the way the world around us works, we're disempowered citizens. Even when you switch on a light, you know that the light doesn't happen by magic. It happens by electricity that comes along wires. The wires can be dangerous. The electricity comes from a power station. The power station burns fuel. It may cause global warming. All of that is underpinned by the science knowledge that you gained at school, whether or not you're a scientist. And so I think it's very important that every child knows something about the digital world that they inhabit, which is so, as we heard in our previous talk, so infuses every aspect of our lives. And it's not just the built world, the artificial world. Computation has increasingly helped us to understand the natural world, too. If you look at a termite colony that builds these extraordinary structures that architectures are still, architects are still trying to figure out, how did they get so well ventilated? Is there a giant termite brain that designs that structure? No. Somehow, these little creatures are operating very simple programs in their very simple brains, which collectively do something amazing. And computer scientists are very interested in working out how that distributed computation takes place. And other colleagues of mine at Microsoft are working out how, how cells figure out whether they're going to become kidneys or backbones. And uh, that's a little computational process that's going on in, you know, in the bodies of embryos all the time. So increasingly, we're thinking of computation as a way to understand the natural world. And lastly, of course, Computer science gives you generic thinking skills that are useful regardless of what profession. So an analysis and design and computational thinking are useful in any profession. Now, I know every subject likes to tell you that, but in case of computer science, it's true. So, <laughs> so all we have to do then is to establish an entirely new subject at school, uh, computer science. The amazing thing is that this is not an aspiration, this is reality. There's been a review of the national curriculum, and as from September 2014, there really is a new subject called computing, right? not information technology anymore, though it still includes the good bits of the uh, using and applying computers, but the term covers computer science and IT. And I want to show you, in this new curriculum, the aims. So the, the whole curriculum is only three pages of A4, you can easily read it, but here are the aims, right? Four aims can understand and apply the fundamental principles of computer science, including logic and algorithms can analyze problems in computational terms and have repeated practical experience of writing programs to solve them. No other country in the world has statements anything like as crisp as this 
from this, remember, this applies from primary school onwards right the way up to um, GCSEs. So I think this is, this is a big breakthrough. Um, so it's happening right here, and uh, everybody else is very interested in watching us. This is where in pole position here in the world, but many other countries are struggling with these exact same issues, and are sort of we're all fumbling our way towards finding a good solution. We in Britain happen to be in that uh, uh, exciting and dangerous position of being in pole position here. So what is the new challenge? Well, it's no longer to change the policy. It's to encourage and support and equip our existing computing teachers to do a fantastic job of delivering this new curriculum. And that's not easy. They are motivated, they are hardworking, they care deeply about their children, but many of them come with not enough background in computer science, because after all, they've never been asked to do this before. So we have to help them. And so who is going to help them? Well, we are. So in the past, it would have been the government, right? And the government this time is, is uh, standing back. They're providing air cover in the form of the curriculum, they're providing uh, some money, but basically it's the sector, teachers, universities, IT professionals, software developers, the people in this room, the people watching this video, everybody has got to get together and help our schools to make a fantastic job of this and to deliver it with, not reluctantly and grudgingly, but with confidence and enthusiasm, because I think we can. And so it's actually a kind of big society thing. This is the big society actually working. There's a kind of creative wave of enthusiasm. These are a whole bunch of little groups that have grown up in the United Kingdom, and there are many others elsewhere in the world um, doing similar things in their own country. Um, that are trying to support schools and, and students to, to uh, run co-clubs after school, to support mentor teachers, and just at the moment, to run training courses to support teachers. Let me tell you very briefly about one, which is the Computing at School group, which I'm chair of and helped start a few years ago. Computing at School is, has been at the epicenter of this whole, um, whole exercise. It's a volunteer, grassroots organization. It now has 10,000 members, but it was... The, the, probably the organization that mainly made the case for establishing computer science as a component of our school curriculum. Um, and so um, we're now stepping up to this challenge of running a big program of training for our teachers across the country. But it is a big challenge. There are 3,500 secondary schools, there are 17,500 primary schools, and this is England alone, and Scotland and Wales and Ireland are going through similar um, upheavals in their own country. Um, the uh, curriculum I showed you is just for England. Um, so there is a lot to do. Uh, and that means that you can actually do something to help. So well, if you're in the IT sector specifically yourself, you, can be, you, could, you have specific things to give, right? You could um, uh, start a co-club, run an after-school programming club um, in schools. You could go to your school and give a talk or just be a role model. You could speak to your, your computing teachers and act as a mentor for them. But even if you're not an IT or uh, computing specialist, you could talk to your school about, um, ab about what their response to the new curriculum is. Is it a, a fearful one or a confident one? What could we do to get them more support to make it possible? There are a lot of schools. And so this, this is a boots on the ground job. This is not a, a sort of air war, something that can be solved centrally. Ev all of us have to help. Um, so if, you just, if we just all sit around and wait for somebody else to do it, nothing will happen, right? So it's kind of fantastic opportunity here. So just let me finish by, by going back to our children. What are we hoping to gain from this? I hope that our children, if we make a good job of establishing the new computing curriculum in its breadth from computer science through to ICT and digital literacy. If we make a good job of that, I think they will become more engaged and curious and playful about the digital technology and also about the natural world that surrounds them. I want them to become creator, creative users of computers. And there's nothing more creative than writing programs, actually. It builds, there's these enormous artifacts that people build out of pure imagination. Um, I want them to be informed and empowered citizens who understand enough about the technology that surrounds them that they can make informed choices about it. Again, harking back to our previous talk. And I do want them to have jobs too. I haven't emphasized that very much, but in the modern knowledge economy, nothing equips you better for a good job than um, having uh, the skills that I've, I've spoken about. So I think we have a kind of once-in-a-generation opportunity to do something remarkable, to make a qualitative improvement in the kind of education we give to our children. So there's everything to play for, but it's not going to happen by magic. It's going to happen because you help to make it happen. Thank you.